What's up everyone, it's Endymion, and today I want to ask a question that's been debated for years. Can we take politics out of video games, and if not, why? Well, that's what I want to explore today. As I'm sure you're well aware, the world is divided. You almost can't watch or play something without having someone talking down to you or trying to feed you their politics as gospel. In the past, you could largely enjoy your favorite hobby without the nonsense that we deal with today. But nowadays, companies are just as concerned with their political stances as they are with things like graphics or gameplay. If your game has the right politics, it can mean big rewards and nominations being showered upon your studio. With examples like The Last of Us Part II being considered by the modern gaming industry to be one of the best games of all time. While there's many people out there who equally hate the game because it ruins Joel and sidelines him in favor of Ellie and characters like Abby or Lev, who all conveniently tick certain identity political checkboxes. Then you have companies like Warner Bros with Hogwarts Legacy which selectively chose which reviewers to give review codes to. And they had to constantly remind these journalists that the game had no ties to J.K. Rowling. But that game's quality spoke for itself and now it's a critical and commercial success. I mean, Legacy sold over 12 million copies in two weeks. That's nuts. I bet the woke activists are mad about that one. <laughs> On the other hand, you have companies that are currently in the dumps who can't seem to keep themselves from digging deeper graves. Recently, Ubisoft has made headlines for teaming up with UK police when it comes to in-game speech that's considered hateful. Ubisoft has even said they're doing this to be on the right side of history. Basically, this team-up is designed so that Ubisoft can relay any hate-mongering in their online games that could escalate to real-world harm. So if you no-scope headshot some dude and he calls you a racial slur, Ubisoft wants to make sure their own ass is covered so nobody blames their games for inciting violence. But as a millennial myself, I grew up in the fires of early Call of Duty multiplayer lobbies, and trust me, those were more toxic and hilarious than anything these new kids could do. How do you even do Grandmasters? I can barely do the legendary campaign. My teammates keep telling me to build craft, but I don't even know what that is. Just go back to bed, Sleepy Joe, and leave the destiny grind to the professionals. Apparently, this joint operation Ubisoft has had with UK police has only resulted in 0.01% of reported cases actually needing a police investigation. Ubisoft's Andrew Holiday told the BBC, quote, This isn't just a gaming problem, it's an internet problem. There's a real appetite to make the whole ecosystem a better place. What we're working on closely with police on is triaging, where we look at a case and decide, is this one we can deal with in-house or is this something we need to pass on? End quote. Another Ubisoft employee, Damien Glorio, who's the senior director of relations between Ubisoft and UK police, said, quote, We want to be on the right side of history. We have millions of players and tens of millions of interactions, so how can we spot incidents? It is daunting, but at the same time, it is very important, which is why we wanted to sign this deal and try to make things right. We wanted to focus on the most extreme cases, make sure we do the right thing there because it gives us a solid foundation to build the rest of our work around." End quote. I think this is all ridiculous myself, and if you want an easier and cheaper solution, just don't use your mic in-game. Seriously, just mute people if they're spewing garbage, but what do I know? I've only been playing video games since online gaming began. God, I'm old. This political discourse in gaming seems to be getting fueled almost every other day, with sites now having concerns with Atomic Heart, the recently released Russian Bioshock meets Wolfenstein game. I've already done a whole video diving into that Russian controversy, but now something else has happened. In the game's promotions, you've no doubt seen the robot twins. Well, it turns out their hair is now problematic. The hairstyle that the robot twins have is actually identical to Ukraine's former Prime Minister Yulia Tymoshenko. One Twitter user even compiled some images to further drive the point that Atomic Heart's developers designed the twins as sex slave robots that looked like Ukraine's former Prime Minister. The haircut, by the way, is iconic in Ukraine and is directly associated with Yulia Tymoshenko. So this coincidence, as some would like to think it is, might actually be legit this time. And this design could be Atomic Heart's Russian devs trying to defame someone who opposes their government. 
The entire Atomic Heart scenario has even led to Ukraine officials urging companies like Sony, Microsoft, Steam, and more to boycott the game and not sell it, but that's fallen mostly on deaf ears. Atomic Heart has also been criticized for having a racist depiction of black people in their save rooms. It's from a supposed beloved cartoon that many Russian people watched growing up called New Pagati, which is basically the Russian version of Tom and Jerry. In the game, you can view entire episodes of this cartoon when you're in a save room and that's where you can see the racist caricature. And review sites, yet again, are demanding Atomic Heart's developer remove the footage due to the political backlash. But again, like the twin robots looking like a prime minister, this too will likely just be kept in. And this is the part of the video where I get spicy, but before you crucify me, hear me out. I think it's also important to remember that the politics and cultural differences between countries seems to almost never be taken into account when boycotts are concerned. As in Russia, their cartoons may seem harmless to them, but outside of their country, it's now problematic. The reality is that Atomic Heart as a game is designed to be inspired heavily by Russian culture, which makes sense. And I think demanding a company that's made a game that encapsulates a lot of their own culture, and then being ordered to change it to fit another country's culture, is counterintuitive. It would be like asking a Holocaust documentary to not use any footage that would be problematic or offensive. But in order to retain the authenticity of what that experience is about, it needs to showcase what actually is instead of what you want it to be. Even if that means the media in question is problematic or could be seen as politically incorrect by certain groups. Basically, changing things that are representative of how things actually are in certain cultures is not the right way to go about this. If you sanitize and bend over backwards to appeal to everyone's problems, you'll appease nobody and end up with a product that says nothing, and has no reason to exist because any real nuance or unique perspective it could have held has been sanded off in order to not offend anyone. And that's a big problem with today's gaming as well as all entertainment. There's a constant debate online that games need more perspectives, more varied locations, and games being made by people that aren't just Westerners, mostly. So when you end up with a game that uniquely retains their culture, warts and all, like Atomic Heart, I don't think telling the devs to mold it to fit Western values makes any sense. That would be like walking into a Japanese restaurant and demanding a burger and fries when all they sell is sushi and teriyaki. You're asking for more diversity in storytelling and design, yet when a game comes along that fits that bill like Atomic Heart has, it's as if the activist game journalists are mad because it doesn't fit their beliefs or push their politics. Whether the racist caricature and the haircut the robot twins have are obviously problematic in the eyes of the West, removing them would remove the authenticity of the game and the culture of what it's about to begin with. Besides, Atomic Heart is also critical of the Soviet Union. It's sort of how in Bioshock Infinite, they have separate bathrooms for black and white people. Just ignoring the racial tensions to fit a narrative would be disingenuous. But tackling it head on and displaying the grim reality is what art is supposed to do in the first place. And not all art should be politically correct. And it shouldn't be up to the journos and their homogenized worldviews who decide whether a game should exist or not, but the players who actually support the games. Am I making any sense to you? If you sanitize everything but also want diversity when it comes to storytelling, then you have to be accepting that not every story or game will be what you want. And when games that try to appeal to other groups happen, like Ghostwire Tokyo for example, you end up with a game that lives in this middle ground that doesn't capitalize on its unique cultural roots enough because it's so concerned with checking boxes that Western gamers would like. Such as having an open world when that game design idea doesn't fit what the game should be going for, which is being a horror first person game set in a Japanese folklore setting. What could have been a cool focused Japanese game that plays to the developer's strengths, instead you end up with a game that doesn't appeal to either horror fans or open world fans, and that's what I'm talking about. If Atomic Heart bent the knee to Western political ideals, then it wouldn't be Atomic Heart anymore. And just another pointless, watered-down product that doesn't say anything of value or offer a unique perspective. 
The truth is that video games have always been political, because as soon as your game has any plot involving religion, governments, or war, your game will have a political angle. There's no denying that. Games like Metal Gear Solid, for example, are insanely political, but the difference here is that MGS doesn't talk down to the audience. Kojima used concepts like shadow governments, prisoners of war, and generational trauma in order to tell a story that resonated with fans. Metal Gear Solid is not a good series because of its politics alone, but because it fearlessly embraces what makes it unique. Even if by today's standards I'm sure Eva's outfit in Snake Eater would be problematic to game journalists. I mean, remember the whole controversy surrounding Quiet and her design? Kojima could have bent the knee when it came to Quiet, but he didn't and good for him. Because when you do bend the knee like Call of Duty does, you end up with games like Vanguard, which is a game set during World War II. Yet in multiplayer, all Nazi imagery is removed and the teams are not allies and Nazis, but instead my team and enemy team. Which is stupid as hell, if I'm being perfectly honest with you. Games like Red Dead Redemption 2 are also political because they showcase an era of America where old ways are dying and being replaced by new concepts like the Industrial Revolution. And it also tackles racism in the Wild West, but again, it's because it confidently shows these concepts as they are that the game's impact lasts, because it actually has something to say. Many of the best games have politics woven into their identity, and honestly, it's for the better. Games like Metal Gear Rising Revengeance has you fighting a literal senator for the future of America, which is both hilarious and amazing. Nice argument, Senator. Why don't you back it up with a source? My source is that I made it the f*** up. Then you have games like Mass Effect, which is full of xenophobia, cultural politics, and morally gray decision making. I mean, Mass Effect 3's entire plot is about trying to unite the galaxy by getting these different species who hate one another to look past their history for the greater good of the galaxy. And then you have games like Cory in the House on Nintendo DS, which literally takes place in the White House. You don't get more political than that. Even outside of games, I would argue one of the best comics of the last two decades was Marvel's Civil War, which was probably one of the most political stories they've ever done. And while it did pit characters like Captain America and Iron Man on opposing sides, the actual conflict was deeper than just punches and explosions. It's probably also why I found Captain America Civil War to be, to this day, one of the MCU's best by a long shot. Because whether it's within the confines of Captain America and Iron Man fighting, or movies like Schindler's List, or games like Metal Gear Solid, you have to accept that these entertainment mediums will always be political to varying degrees. Hell, even Elden Ring could be seen as political since the entire dilemma of that game's plot is about deciding which outer god's power will become the next ruler of the upcoming era. Do you side with the Golden Order and enforce their beliefs, or maybe usher in what Ronnie wants? Sure, they may not all be sitting in a room together having a meeting or rallying with signs on front porches, but the reality is that politics are so interwoven into every game, it's almost impossible to remove them. Then there's executives like Tim Sweeney, CEO of Epic Games, you know, the creators of Fortnite. He believes that while games are inevitably political, companies should do their best to stay out of politics, which sounds a little contradicting. Well, Tim had this to say, quote, If a game tackles politics as To Kill a Mockingbird did as a novel, it should come from the heart of creatives and not from marketing departments seeking to capitalize on division. We should get the marketing departments out of politics. We live in a world where your political affiliation determines what chicken restaurant you go to. There's no reason to drag divisive topics like that into gaming. We need to create a very clear separation between church and state. Employees, customers, and everyone else should be able to express themselves. We as companies need to divorce ourselves from politics. Platforms should be neutral." End quote. And in his defense, Fortnite has largely stayed politically neutral. They don't really talk down to anyone, but instead just collaborate with many different games and publishers in order to make money. It's likely why Fortnite continues to remain a cultural phenomenon so many years after its release. But if Fortnite were to suddenly, let's say hypothetically, have a Black Lives Matter event, where every white player would need to bend their knee to black players in solidarity, well, yeah, that would be financial suicide for Fortnite and Epic. And it's refreshing that Epic understands this and wants no part in it. Because when you have developers or companies virtue signal for clout, it never works as they intended. 
That's why when a Hogwarts Legacy dev openly boycotted the game that, mind you, they worked on as protest, not only is it hypocritical, it's hilariously tone deaf too. Like you got paid to work on the game, and now it's done, and you have your money, and now it's suddenly problematic. All those years of working on Hogwarts, and you never once thought to yourself how working on it would make your woke activist friends feel like. Idiots, all of them. I'm tired of mincing my words. It's just plain stupidity at this point and just further solidifies that politics for many people are just performative acts, with their beliefs being about as shallow as their personalities. Unfortunately, many grifters are out there and I'm sure there are some who think I'm a part of that group too. I like to think of myself like Epic Games does. I exist in a neutral space where I will call out and criticize any side if what they're doing is insane. The only way forward as a society is to be open and understanding, not to put up walls and gatekeep like so many legacy media sites do these days. It's also why I won't support games like Overwatch because of their blatant insane practices where they filter their characters through algorithms to ensure new heroes are politically diverse. In case you haven't heard that crazy story, Blizzard actually has a program that rates their characters with things like skin color, sexual orientation, and body shape all having varying values. It's why you haven't seen a straight white male hero in Overwatch in years, because being straight, white, and a man are like kryptonite to Overwatch's diversity tool. But if you swap that character to say Asian and a woman, or muscular lady who's probably gay, well, that character is most likely going to be made instead. It's why a large majority of AAA games anyways feel so homogenized and frankly forgettable. Because they're too afraid to step on toes, afraid that if they say something, some activist hack will crap their pants in protests and call them something phobic. It's why Ubisoft didn't make Far Cry 5 political at all, because they didn't want to piss off the people who like Trump. But because they didn't take a political stance, the hack activists got belly hurt and said Far Cry 5 sucks because it didn't attack Trump. You can't seem to win these days when it comes to modern gaming and politics. I genuinely believe that art in all of its forms should be unapologetically authentic, even if that means it offends people. Because the point of art is to say something, so even though Atomic Heart is clearly very politically driven, and it may or may not be attacking Ukrainian values, the harsh truth is that just because it doesn't portray what you think is politically correct, it doesn't mean it needs to be boycotted or removed from sales fronts. Like, I'm not a big fan of furries or any weird stuff like that, but you won't see me telling people to boycott Goodbye Volcano High. And I can already guess that game will have its politics too, the same way Atomic Heart or Metal Gear Solid do as well. The undeniable truth is that you simply cannot separate politics from games or any entertainment medium for that matter because the reality is that art is the collective creation of those whose hands were used to make it. And those hands are guided by their minds, which have all been influenced by varying levels of ideologies and concepts, even those you may or may not agree with. Video games without politics is like Seinfeld without George Costanza. It just can't exist. And like I've said so many times in the past, it's not the politics in video games that are bad, but when creators believe it's their duty and right to use their art in order to talk down to their audience. You should never assume you know better than everyone else when it comes to any topic. I guarantee you there's someone watching this right now that knows more about this stuff than I do and they likely disagree with me at points. And you know what? That's totally fine. In fact, I encourage it. I hope something I said in this video has pissed you off or made you think, because that's what art and entertainment is meant to do. If you're not thinking, you're not living in my opinion. Hell, maybe even me saying that will piss someone off, which if it does, good. I'm glad I made you angry. Now go use that anger and make something out of it. Because the world will never just be black and white, liberal and conservative, but instead, you should look at the world like a peanut butter sandwich. On one side you got jelly, the other peanut butter. On their own they're pretty good, but smash those suckers together and you got yourself a bonafide combo that really hits the spot. So if you take anything away from this video, it's that video games will always be political and I don't want to hear people saying, keep politics out of gaming. When in reality what they're trying to say is, just don't push it in my face and talk down to me, which I agree with. And to the hacktivists out there who piss and moan when something is released that they don't agree with, just know it's in your right to speak and debate it, but it's not your right to demand a culture you know nothing about personally into changing their art because it offends you. 
If you don't like something, ignore it. Vote with your wallet. But don't cry that things need to be changed because they don't follow your politics to a T. Because when art is told to follow only one set of ideologies, otherwise it's considered problematic, that's how you end up with an industry where so many games all feel and play the exact same, spewing the same BS. We need less homogenized experiences in more games, movies, and whatever else, giving unique perspectives even if they don't agree with me or you. And whether a piece of art succeeds or doesn't will come down to whether people support that art. Because in the end, even if places like Games Done Quick decide to ban Hogwarts Legacy and other Harry Potter games because of JK Rowling, the market will clearly speak volumes by action alone. Politics will always exist in games, whether we want it to or not, because ultimately politics are like humanity itself. It's flawed and it's endless. And you won't change that by crying or complaining, but by using your own politics to change the world around you. And if you think silencing others is the only way to strengthen your own personal beliefs, then your politics are probably shit. So what do you think about politics and gaming? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.